Tom here from Lawrence Systems, and today we're going to cover HAProxy and Let's Encrypt on PFSense. But before we begin, a couple of prerequisites here. You should own a domain. For example, Cloudflare is less than $10 a year for a domain. We're going to be using a Cloudflare domain as an example, but it will work with a lot more than just Cloudflare because we're going to be doing this using the API. So Cloudflare, DigitalOcean, there's many other choices. We'll cover that later when we talk about how to set up certificates with Acme and how to automate them because we're going to be using wildcard certs. So owning a domain name is going to be a prerequisite for this. Next, PFSense Plus or Community Edition. This will work on either one of those. We're going to be using the latest version versions available here in August of 2023. And everything's going to be time indexed down below so you can jump to the part that's most relevant. But we will be starting with some diagrams. The reason why is because when I did this video before, there were a lot of concepts that I realized people didn't understand for how reverse proxies work and how important DNS is. And almost all the consulting we do regarding fixing this for people is pretty much DNS, DNS, and occasionally someone getting a couple of the things wrong about where they pointed their DNS. That is probably the number one issue. There's a few others and we will cover basic troubleshooting and how to set this up, but this is going to be a complete guide from start to finish from loading the packages, which I've already done. So that part's easy to getting this all configured and making sure you can access your servers. I'm going to cover doing this privately as in keeping the domain inside so you don't have to publicly expose your services, but I will also talk about the method by which you can expose it. They're pretty much the same. It's just a matter of what interface you attach it to. Now, before we begin, we do need to hear from a sponsor, and today's sponsor is, well, my company. So let's get into the ad read, then we'll get you to the content. Are you an individual or forward-thinking company looking for expert assistance with network engineering, storage, or virtualization projects? Perhaps you're an internal IT team seeking help to proactively manage, monitor, or secure your systems. We offer comprehensive consulting services tailored to meet your specific project needs. Whether you require fully managed or co-managed IT services, our experienced team is ready to step in and help. We specialize in supporting businesses that need IT administration or IT teams seeking an extra layer of support to enhance their operations. To learn more about any of our services, head over to our website and fill out the Hire Us form at lawrencesystems.com. Let us start crafting the perfect IT solution for you. If you want to show some extra love for our channel, check out our swag store and affiliate links down below that will lead you to discounts and deals for products and services we discuss on this channel. With the ad read out of the way, let's get you back to the content that you really came here for. Now, most of this video is going to focus on setting this up to use your private IP internally, but I will cover just that one extra step or technically two that you need to do to get this working publicly. One is you have to have publicly available DNS and through the rest of the demo, we're going to be using local DNS instead of our PFSense, but it goes out of scope of this to cover how to point a domain at your public IP address because that is very dependent on whoever provides you DNS. But in our demo site here, we have ltsdemo.org. This is the domain that I bought that I'm using for this and we're going to use truenas and uptimekuma.org ltsdemo.work is our fully qualified domains. And if we wanted to make this public, the thing that we would do differently is we would bind our HA proxy to my public IP. Now you can have more than one IP on APF Sense, so you can have multiple public IP addresses and you would just attach HA proxy to whichever one was public. And then the other thing you'd have to do is open up the firewall rules. By default, PF Sense blocks incoming WAN requests, but you can override that, put a firewall rule in to allow things to locally talk to the HA proxy or the firewall itself because they're both on the same device. And then you would publicly expose things. And I didn't want to do that for this particular demo because if I publicly expose things and publicly expose my IP address, one that comes with lots of risks. And well, someone might even just DDoS it just to be annoying. And that's another risk that may come with it. But both of these can point at the same IP if you only have one IP and HA proxy. And this is the part we will be covering is how it handles ACLs or the access control list and has a set of rules that say, look at the different domains that are coming in and serve up the server from behind there. But each of these would just point to whatever your public IP address is. And that would allow a client outside the network to go across to the internet and get served up a proper certificate by HA proxy for these devices that are behind your PFSense. We are going to focus on doing this privately so you can have your own and we're going to be using 
wildcard DNS for this. And that does apply even with it being public, but this allows you to create all of your own DNS. We're gonna use, in this case, PFSense for DNS because PFSense acts as our DNS server and it acts as our proxy server. So we don't need to go outside the internet for this to work in terms of for the client, other than it does have to have internet access when you get your certificate. So the certificate renewals do require internet, but the actual functionality and you're not exposing your servers like your TrueNAS or your Uptime Kuma server, we're gonna use as demos in here, to the public internet because we're going to take the DNS for these, the truenas.ltsdemo.work, uptimekuma.ltsdemo.work, and they're both going to have a DNS entry of 10.13.13.1, which is the interface that we're going to bind them to on our PFSense. So the DNS will be a private IP address, and this is on the same network. So as long as PFSense is serving DNS to this particular client, the certificates will line up, match, and the domains will match, and we'll get served a proper certificate. This is the DNS part that a lot of people doing private have a harder time with, because public, it makes sense that you need your public DNS not to point to your internal IPs of your servers. It would point to the proxy. But when it's internal, the same thing applies. It has to point to the proxy. So even though uptimekuma.ltsdemo.work is going to be pointed at 10.13.13.1, it's going to, via the rules in HA proxy, come over to here to uptimekuma and the back end. This is the big mistake a lot of people make where they think the internal IP name, or sometimes because they also have their own DNS entry of how they get to one of their servers internally, they try to match it and then have a DNS problem where it doesn't match because it's trying to go directly to the server and we need the client to go to the HA proxy on PFSense to serve up the certificate and let HA proxy broker that connection back to the back end. Now let's get into the functional of setting this up now that we've covered the concepts. The first step is making sure you have the package installed. So we have the Acme package and HAProxy package installed here. If they're not installed, just head over to available packages and go ahead and install those. Then we go to system and we want to go to advanced. By default, PFSense is on TC port 443. This is for the web interface of PFSense. We'd like to move it somewhere else. I chose 10443. Then down here, we have web GUI redirect. Make sure that's checked. This is a port 80 configuration rule. You don't absolutely have to do this, but if you don't and something hits port 80, it'll actually redirect to whatever port you have chosen here. I'm not covering put in a redirect rule for port 80 because most browsers choose HTTPS by default now. Next, we're going to set up the Acme certificates. The Acme certs are right here. On the general settings, make sure you have the cron entry checked. This will enable the automatic renewal of the certificates. I already have certificates in here, but the first step would actually be creating an account key. Creating account keys is really easy. We can just put in test, test. Make sure you are choosing, if you're ready for production, the production system. We'll actually do a staging one, but please note, if you want it to work properly, you do need production. And then you would hit create new account key. It will grab the account key. Once that's populated, you can then register the Acme account key. And then you'll click save. And now you'll have a new system. But note, this one is in testing, so we're going to delete it. These are ones are in production, and they have proper account keys. Once you have a proper account key, you can go over here to certificates. And I have my LTS demo work. I can show you this one because this one will show you too much. It'll actually show you a part of my Cloudflare authorization. This one works the same way, but I did it with DigitalOcean. And you see we're getting a wild card for studio.lawrencesystems.com. And we have my DigitalOcean API key, which is blurred out. If we look at creating any new certificate, and let's go ahead and just walk through that process. When we add one, we would go here to add, and we would give it a name. And the name does not have to match the domain name, but we will call it wildcard cert for domain. You can put the same description error, which can be a little bit more typed out if you need to. And then we can choose all the different options. Now you do not need to open any ports for all these DNS options that are in here. These are all the different companies that have automated DNS or API support via PFSense. There's quite a few of them in here, so you can probably find DuckDNS or whichever DNS you might be using to get this to work. Of note, I am using DigitalOcean and Cloudflare. I've tested both of these in the system to make sure they work. And if you use Cloudflare, it does ask a lot of these questions and it does not blur all of them when you go back to edit. But you must fill out all of these questions if you're doing it, for example, with 
DigitalOcean, it only asks for the DigitalOcean API key. The important part though, is that you have the domain in here properly. And I will blur out the bottom, but please note the domain because we want a wildcard is asterisk.ltsdemo.work. That gives us a wildcard domain. So it will pull the wildcard cert so we can make up anything we want dot ltsdemo.work. I will also point out you can do it this way, asterisk.studio.lawrencesystems.com. I'm using lawrencesystems.com in more than one place, and I want to distinguish things on this particular server as located at my studio. So this will allow us to create any name .studio.lawrencesystems.com within this server. The final thing I will mention is making sure you have this right here. It's user local etsy rc.d haproxy.sh restart. The reason you need that is because when the certificate renews, you want HAProxy to restart so it can use that new certificate. So I do recommend you add that. If not, even though the certificate may be renewed, if HAProxy does not restart, it will not start using that new certificate when the certificate expires. Now we're going to go over the services and then HAProxy, and let's look at the settings. Make sure HAProxy is enabled. Then we'll go down here and change the reload behavior. This is my personal preference, especially for troubleshooting. You may not want this on, but it forces the immediate stop of old processes on reload, closes existing connections. I do this that way if I'm especially adding new servers and troubleshooting, I want every time I restart HA proxy, don't hold on to any sessions. Even if I'm just adding something to the front end or back end, kill all those sessions and start them over. That way I don't have any old sessions confusing me. But please note, checking this option will interrupt existing connections on a restart, which happens when configuration is applied. Scrolling down a little further, I don't have this filled out, but in production systems, I usually do. Remote syslog host, you can put a specific syslog and send all that data from HAProxy to its own syslog server. This may help you in collecting all of your logs, not needed for the demo server we have here. Then we're gonna go all the way to the bottom and we can just hit save, which brings us to the apply changes. And of note, anytime you apply changes, it kills all those connections. Now we're gonna build a backend and we wanna add a new backend. We're gonna call it TrueNAS. And we're going to click on this little server table and expand it out. And we want to call that TrueNAS as well. So T-R-U-E-N-A-S. And then we're going to put an address in here of 172.16.16.5, the address of our TrueNAS server. 443 is the port. Then we need to scroll over a little bit. Yes, this is encrypted. Do not check it. It is important you do not do an SSL check because there is not a valid certificate. It is a self-signed certificate on my TrueNAS server. So we don't want the HA proxy to try to validate that certificate. Now let's go ahead and scroll down further. I'm not going to bother with any type of help checks, but you can do a health check on these if needed. It just will confirm whether or not the backend server is up. And then we can go down here to the bottom, leaving all other things at default and click save. And I'll go ahead and apply the changes. But as you notice, it's kind of grayed out compared to these because there is no front end yet for this particular entry. So let's go ahead and create a front end. For that, we're going to click add. And because this front end is going to be for more than one server, let's just call it YouTube demo. And we'll call this YouTube demo for star.ltsdemo.work because it's a wildcard certificate that we have for this. And this is where we bind the proper IP address. Now, the IP address for this one is specifically the lab VLAN 1313 address. Then we're going to choose the port of 443. We're going to check the box for SSL offloading and we'll leave all of this the same. Then we're going to scroll down. Now here's where we create those ACL lists. These are very important to name them in a consistent way. So we'll call this one TrueNAS and we'll say host matches. We want to match a host name. And the value we're going to use is truenas.ltsdemo.work. Now remember, we can create any domain we want here. We'll get to the DNS settings next. Now this is, says TrueNAS right here. That means when we do the action, because this is the access control list to match on. So host matches TrueNAS at ltsdemo.work. And then we're going to go, what is the action? And we want to use the backend that we named TrueNAS and then conditional ACL name. This has to match exactly. That's why I'm copying and pasting it from here to here. We'll get how to create more of them next. Then we're going to go ahead and scroll down further till we get down to the certificate. And we want the certificate to be the LTS demo that we have set up here. This is that wildcard for that. The other one is using this one here, and you could create more than one backend using another one here if we wanted to use the Lawrence Systems one. But as I said, we're going to be doing the demo work. So LTS demo work, and that is this particular wildcard certificate. 
Then we'll scroll down here to the bottom and we'll click Save. And then we'll hit Apply. Here comes the DNS part where we have to make sure DNS is working. So we know what we have for this domain. So we're going to go here to Services and we're going to go to the DNS Resolver. And we're going to scroll down and I have lots of entries in here, but let's look at the one that's specifically related to this. And that's this TrueNAS at LTS demo work. That entry says TrueNAS is the host. The domain is LTS demo work. It points to 10.13.13.1. And if everything's working properly, let's go ahead and do a quick domain lookup to make sure that the system answers with the domain that we want it to. And we're just going to use dig to do TrueNAS LTS demo dot work. And we see that it's answering 10.13.13.1. And as you can see here, we can go to TrueNAS LTS demo dot work and we can sign in. So we can look at this connection is secure. Certificate is valid. And we see that we're giving it the certificate, the LTS demo dot work. So let's go ahead and set up one more domain at this same address. And since we're here in the DNS world, let's go ahead and add another DNS entry with this host override. So we'll go back over to general settings. We're just gonna click add. We'll call this one Kuma, put the domain, which is the LTS demo dot work, and it's the same IP address. So 10.13.13.1, which is our PF sense. And this is for up oh, time Kuma. Scroll down, save, apply. Always double check your DNS. Make sure Kuma.lts demo dot work works. It does, it comes up with the same IP address. So let's go back in and add an ACL. So we're gonna go over here to our HA proxy. We're gonna edit our existing one we have here and we wanna add another rule. So we're gonna click this access control list here. We'll call it Kuma. Host starts with, host matches is what my goal is here. And it's gonna be auma.ltsdemo.work. Scroll down here. We want to use backend, and we already have an uptime Kuma backend, so we'll use that one there. And we have to make sure, once again, these match. We called it Kuma here, so we will call it Kuma here. So the use backend is this one here. So now if we go down to the bottom, all the other things are the same. We're just gonna hit save. Let's go back and edit this real quick just to cover that. You can see now that it's saved, if the host matches truenas.ltsdemo.work, we're going to be using this ACL, which points to this one here. If it matches the kuma.ltsdemo.work, which is that right there, it says use the backend kuma and use the backend uptime kuma on the back right here. That's all we have to do. And we'll go back over here. We're going to apply the changes and let's see if that works. And now we're at my uptime kuma login. One more thing I want to note if we go over here and we look at the backend and we want to look at the Uptime Kuma backend. I want to point out that this Uptime Kuma backend, and we'll click Edit here, is not encrypted. If you're familiar with Uptime Kuma, by default, it does not have a certificate. I didn't install one on purpose. And the reason why is because I wanted it to be handled by the HA proxy. So the connection from PFSense to this IP address is not going to be encrypted, so we do not have this checked. The certificate, though, is valid here because it's the connection between PFSense and this browser that is encrypted, providing me with that same connection is secure with the valid certificate from the Let's Encrypt certificate. Something else worth noting is that you notice that this is pointed at two different places. This is a way you can create a different front end, but still have one back end server that handles all of your internal. And this could just as easily be if we added another one be bound to my WAN IP address, and we can repeat the process for actually any one of these, or if I had multiple WAN IP addresses, and then I could publicly expose a, a specific server and use that same backend, and it would have two different entries that way. Now, one of the things I wanna comment on is a couple use cases for binding the front end to different interfaces. One of the big use cases for that is because all of your normal firewall rules apply. Let's say you have a guest network and you'd like to have your guests accessing things over HA proxy, such as Uptime Kuma, but you do not want them to access your NAS. And this would be a good use case. You could tie NAS to your secure network that you 
just have you and people you trust on, and then you could have your guest network, but you know, they want to see what servers are up and you could then bind it to that address. Another use case is binding it to the WAN address. Now, as I said, if you bind it to WAN, you need to open up port 443 to have it remotely access, but internally the guest network will have access to it because you don't need to create a rule internally for LAN because by default, PFSense, it is the default behavior for services bound to a specific interface for the network segment and the devices on that segment will have access to that. So just keep that in mind when you're setting it up. Now, I made this video to cover the most common use cases for HA proxy, but obviously there are many more use cases. Check out NetGate's documentation because they have a lot more covered and check out their forums, the NetGate forums. There's a lot of discussion about HA proxy because there's always different edge and different use cases on different specialized environments. And maybe you have one of those environments and there's something beyond that was covered in this video that you need to get configured. Their forums are a great place to check that out. If you want to see more content from this channel, like and subscribe. Also, leave your comments down below. I love hearing from all of you. If you want to connect with me, I'll be over in the forums at forums.lawrencesystems.com or just head over to lawrencesystems.com and figure out what socials I'm on when you're watching this video and you can say hi to me there. All right, and thanks.